Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, influence of through-hole vias on PCB RF performance. And now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about printed circuit boards and specifically uh, an item that's used very often in printed circuit boards, which is uh, plated through hole vias and the impact they can have on RF performance for printed circuit boards. Now, obviously, uh, plated through hole vias are used in uh, the majority of uh, printed circuit boards, but they can be rather difficult to characterize uh, at microwave frequencies and especially at millimeter wave frequencies. Uh, the plated through hole vias actually have several different properties that can be rather difficult to understand. And I'm going to go through several examples today and explain how the capacitance and inductance of a plated through hole via can alter the impedance and ultimately alter the return loss and the performance of the circuit. What I'm showing today will be a quick summary of a paper that I've given at an IPC trade show uh, last year. So if you want more details on this topic, you can go to our Rogers Technology Support Hub and then search for a uh, paper that is from the APEX IPC 2016, same title as this one, with the uh, influence of uh, plated through hole vias on printed circuit board RF performance. And that paper will give you a lot more information on the same topic. So today I'm going to just give you a quick summary and to begin with I want to talk about the test vehicle that we used in this study. The test vehicle that we used in this study was a four copper layer circuit that's actually I would call a dual strip line circuit and it's shown here in the drawing. Now this drawing is actually showing a cross-sectional view of the circuit on the length axis. So going from left to right, the left side would have one connector and going to the right through the body of the circuit in, on the far right would be the other connector. And going through this circuit, you go through different transitions. So to begin with, going from left to right, you get in an area where the strip line circuit is made up of copper layers one, two, and three, copper layer one being the top. And then you move into an area where you have a buried via and it transitions down. So the signal plane that's in layer two, copper layer two, transitions down to copper layer three. And then you go to the right of that, and now you're in the area labeled as strip line circuit two. And now that strip line structure is using copper layers two, three, and four. And then you go to the right of that, you hit another buried via that goes transitioning, that transitions the signal plane from copper layer three up to copper layer two. To the right of that, that structure is uh, strip line circuit three, and that's using copper layers one, two, and three. So the transition of the signal plane from copper layer two to copper layer three is very difficult to do at high frequencies without causing some problems. And that's exactly why I'm trying to show this example, that you can do the uh, transition if you understand the impedance anomalies and the different impedances of the different plated through hole structures. Shown here is a screenshot of one of the circuits being tested. This is actually a worst case scenario for impedance anomalies due to these uh, signal transitions. And on the left side of this is the signal launch. Basically, that's where the connector meets the circuit. And this is an impedance curve. So the green curve is impedance curve, and it is going from left to right along the distance and the length of the circuit. So on the left is the connector. Uh, making contact to the circuit, that's the first impedance glitch, and you have a little bit of noise after that, and then you come up to marker one. Marker one showing impedance about 49.2 ohms, which is good. You go to the right of that, and that's where you get to the first signal plane transition from copper layer two to copper layer three, and it is a capacitive dip. And then you go to the right of that sum, and you're maintaining the 49 ohms, and to the right more is the second transition, another capacitive dip, and that's now going from copper layer three back up to copper layer two through a via transition. And then going to the right again, and we have another via transition going from copper layer two back down to copper layer three, and then you go to the right and you get to the end of the circuit where there's another connector attached to the circuit. So the plated through holes that are used in the PCB industry, as a general rule, they're thought of as being inductive, and that's generally true. However, if you really look at it in detail, there's other aspects. So the plated through hole via does have some inductance, of course, but it also has capacitance. And depending on the surrounding uh, geometry around the plated through hole, the size of the through hole, the copper in the through hole, that can actually increase or decrease the inductance or increase and decrease the capacitance. 
Now, the part of the study that was critical was really trying to minimize the impedance anomaly at each one of these transitions. And when you do that, then you can have a very clean transition from one copper layer to the other, and having a clean impedance transition also pretty much relates to having a good RF transition to where the return loss is very little affected. And that's really what the intent here was, and that is to basically minimize the impedance anomaly at each one of these transitions and try to have the circuit have a much wider band return loss. The diagram shown here is a plated through-hole via going through a four copper layer circuit. Admittedly, this is not the exact same construction as ours, but it does give you a good idea of the different impedance and capacitance characteristics of a plated through-hole structure. So it's showing that there is a series inductance due to the via going from one copper plane to another, which is correct, but there's also some capacitance, and some of that capacitance is the copper of the plated through-hole itself and some of the capacitance is the gap between the plated through hole wall and the ground planes on the inner layers, which would be the antipad. And basically, if there's a tight space between the plated through hole wall and the ground on the inner layers, you have higher capacitance. If that space is opened up and a larger antipad, now you have lower capacitance or an increase in inductance. So this is a good representation of a plated through hole via going through a multi-layer circuit. In the picture shown here, I actually have two different screenshots that I'm comparing. The first screenshot is the impedance curve that I already showed, and that was really uh, a worst case scenario where each one of these signal transitions have a pretty good capacitive dip, which is not desired. And then the screenshot below that is a modification of the structure, the plated through hole structure in the area of the signal transition. And now you can see that the impedance is minimized, uh, the impedance transition is minimized, so there really is no capacitive dip. There's just a little wiggle there that's slightly capacitive, slightly inductive. And that's pretty much ideal. That's about as good as you're going to get. And the response to that is going to be shown on the next picture that is really the performance comparison in an RF sense. The pictures shown here are the same circuits that were tested on the previous pictures, where the previous pictures were the impedance characteristics. Now we're looking at the RF characteristics of these circuits. The top picture is looking at the S11, S22 return loss curves, which is the orange and the blue curves respectively. And the gray curve is the S21 insertion loss. And for the circuit with the poor impedance transitions, that's the upper circuit. You can see that it only has good return loss out to about 11 gigahertz or so. What I consider to be good return loss is a, good, a return loss of 15 dB or better. Now the bottom uh, picture is showing a, a, the same circuit that had the very good impedance matching. And in this case, we have good return loss all the way up to 22 gigahertz. So you can see smoothing out the impedance anomalies of these signal vias really does make quite a remarkable difference in the bandwidth of the RF performance. As part of the study, we looked at several different characteristics of the design of the plated through hole via and varying several different things that has a difference in impedance for capacitive or inductive. And what we found was the plated through hole itself, the length of it, like a through hole via going all the way through the circuit, has more metal, and more metal basically means more capacitance. And then a varied via that's actually just uh, isolated within the structure of the circuit that is shorter and less metal has less capacitance or more inductance. Uh, another thing to think about is the copper plating. More copper plating in the through hole means more capacitance, less copper plating, less capacitance. The diameter of the through hole also is uh, significant. A narrow or very small diameter hole is inductive. A bigger hole is more capacitive. So using these different properties and adjusting them to minimize the impedance anomaly at these transitions is really the key part of the study. The table of information shown here is a quick summary of the study. There's a lot more details. Again, you can get this from our Rogers Technology Support Hub if you want to take a look at the paper and get into more details. But the table of inf information here is uh, pretty meaningful for some of the basic uh, things that we learned in the study. To begin with, if you look at the first two rows, uh, test vehicle TV2, TV10, this is using through hole vias through the entire circuit to make the transition for the signal to go from copper layer two to three. And that has, uh, that particular type of through hole via is through the entire link, so it has more metal just by the nature of it going through the entire circuit. And what we found was if you drill a smaller diameter, that reduces the capacitance effect, and because of that, we get better return loss. And you can see that at the far right. 
And then the other vias that we looked at, some of them anyway, is shown here on the row, uh, row three and row four, which is test vehicle TV4 and TV12. These were buried vias, and they physically are shorter, so they don't have as much metal, not as much capacitance. So in this case, to actually improve the return loss, what we did was drill a larger hole and increase the capacitance some, and there you can see the return loss improved pretty substantially from 12 megahertz, I'm sorry, 12 gigahertz to 22 gigahertz. That now concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.